Hello! In this video, we're going to explore how to debug client-side JavaScript using Visual Studio 2008. Before we move on to that activity, we need to have several prerequisites in place. The first is that Internet Explorer needs to be configured as the default browser whenever you'd like to debug JavaScript using Studio. With that in place, it's also necessary to configure the options in Internet Explorer. What you need to do is choose Internet Options, Advanced, and then under Browsing, disable two checkboxes. You want to make sure that Disable Script Debugging and Disable Script Debugging Other, that both of these options are not checked under Advanced Settings for Internet Explorer. If they are checked, then you can't debug client-side JavaScript using Studio. Once Internet Explorer is configured properly, you can then navigate back to Visual Studio. And what you'd want to have in place is a local website running out of the file system with an HTML file. That HTML file then would have to be configured to be the start page when this solution is started by Studio or this website. So what happens there? To, is you right click the file and you choose set a start page. What that means is when we go in to debug the page that will be the first page hit in the process. So I would go into my debug menu and choose start debugging. So what happened when I hit start debugging is it launched an instance of Internet Explorer and there's a process running on your computer that manages Internet Explorer or this instance of it and Visual Studio is attached to that process, so it's monitoring everything that happens in Internet Explorer. That way, if JavaScript is fired, it can intercept it and work with you interactively as you troubleshoot that code. So I'm going to stop debugging at this point, and we're going to repeat the process. Now, that debugging feature won't come to life unless you set what's called a breakpoint in your code. So what we're looking at here is the actual HTML of our sample page. It has what you should recognize as rather familiar HTML elements, but then it also has a new HTML element called script. Script is a place where you can put client-side script logic. And here we have several functions defined in JavaScript. These functions are callable by each other, or by HTML elements on the page in response to what are called events. An example of an event would be when you click a button on a page. I'm switching now to design view. So you can see that this page has a, an input button labeled submit. When I go back to source, here's the HTML for the input button. At the end of that line of code is what's called an event handler. It says on click equals submit form. So whenever the button's clicked, the submit form JavaScript function is called. One little point to mention is that JavaScript is very case sensitive. So submit form has to be spelled the same and case the same here as it uh, is at, in the actual HTML. If this was uppercase S, it wouldn't work. So what this function does is it actually creates a variable uh, labeled BLN. That's something that was defined by the programmer to represent a output value coming back from this function called validate required. So what's happening is the script is trying to make sure that a required field, in this case the name, is always entered before the form can be submitted to the server. So that function calls validate required which is simply checking to see if the value is blank and if it is it sends a message to the user and cancels the function with a false result if it is not blank it returns a true result and that's checked for in our script you certainly don't have to worry about understanding all of these logical strategies in this code for now it's more a matter of how do you debug something like this how do you step through it interactively and that's what we're going to do right now so the first thing we have to do again is set a breakpoint since submit form is triggered when we click our submit button, I'm going to set a breakpoint on its very first actual line of code. And you do that to the very left of the code in this gray tray in Visual Studio. So I'm going to click by line 14. I've now set a breakpoint. So I go back to debug. I choose start debugging. I get into my page. 
and I'm going to type my name and now I'm going to click submit and when I do that it does actually go to the first line of code under submit form and it's going to when I click to step into this code under debug step into we're going to leave this function we're going to travel to validate required because that's what it wants us to do it wants to run that function and see if name is populated so I click debug step into we go right into validate required and it's looking at value which equals Jim to see if it's blank step into is also available as a little icon on your debug menu so I click step into it skipped all that code it didn't show a message because it's happy it has my name so it returns true so now my actual submit form script is really curious to see what happened so it's checking that variable which is set to true from that first function so it's not false so it won't return another false which would totally abort everything instead it continues on it comes down to a point where it really wants to make sure the user meant to click submit so it's running a special JavaScript routine called confirm so when we run this routine you see a special message box appears it's always looks the same it has a text area which you can define it has two buttons OK or cancel if I click OK the script receives a true result if I click cancel the script receives a false result so I'm going to click cancel so it's checking now it doesn't know until it checks that boolean was set to false by my confirm method and when I step through if it's set to true it submits the form otherwise it puts a message out to the user saying form submission has been cancelled it's important to note that confirm and alert and submit they're all defined in JavaScript itself I did nothing to create those routines they're permanently part of JavaScript by contrast routines like submit form and validate required were created from scratch they're hand created so JavaScript is always a combination of custom code made by the web developer and inherent code that's part of JavaScript so back to our little routine here so we, we click cancel on whether or not to submit the form and now when I step into the code we see another message box saying form submission has been canceled just a simple alert so now we're at the end of our script and the page routine has finished so hopefully you can see how once you get a better handle on JavaScript how this tool could be really useful in seeing exactly what's happening and when as you troubleshoot and learn how to use this really neat technology thank you very much